OK, let's start up and see how long it's going to run. As normal, when I'm on stage, I usually do something live, not death by outside, in one go. As a benefit also, on my main routers with just one tick, I could also get my user accounts for administration of the routers, because I already have the infrastructure with the radio servers up and running. To be able to do this from the beginning, we actually need to have a dual stack network. I've had two already presentations on it. From 2016 in Ljubljana, I did one dual stack implementation uh, with full BGP, uh, uh, BGP session with Hurricane Electric. So we had the dual stack that way if you're not able to do that directly natively with your upstream providers. But instead of me doing a full presentation that takes four to five minutes again, I just give you the link for the next one. This is actually the setup I'm going to have on stage. What I have up here in Sweden, we have a BGP gateway. I have a VPN going up to that one with an OSPF session, both for the IPv6 and IPv4. Down here on my table, we have a dual stack router that acts as the DHCP server, both for the DHCP 4 and 6. And it's actually going to hand out prefixes. Because the, the thing is, we don't hand out IPs in IPv6. We're talking with prefixes. There's been a lot of discussions about that we should have framed IPv6 addresses in the radios. No, we should have prefixes. So it's a different thing of names. And the radio server is actually located in Sweden now. So that's why I needed to have a cable in to actually be 100% sure that the traffic goes all the way as it should. So in the radio server client, this one, you, all of you have probably seen it and wonder why it is there. And the two features I'm going to use today is the login. That's actually for the administration accounts on the router itself. And on top of that, you have the DHCP one. And of course, I have a server address with, that is UDP traffic and a secret. But I'm also actually adding the source address of the package. And that's more or less to lock down to a certain interface that's on my router to be 100% sure that's not going to change. Because in the radio server later on, you actually put in the address of my router. So it actually sends the package the right way. In the DHCP server session part, on IPv4, it's actually very easy. There's two ticks you need to remember here. Only two ticks. Normally, you don't have them in ticked. But we're down here, we have one allow dual stack queue. That's the feature we're going to use later on. And you end it up to ra use radios. The same second you put it into use radios, unless there is MAC address in your radio server, clients are not going to get an IP unless you have a static setup for them. So all clients need to be on the radio server for actually getting network on this. And that's. Basically, what, us, what we as an ISP want, no one should get IP unless they're allowed to be there. A little bit more tricky on the DHCP server on IPv6. Part of it is actually allowed to do directly in the Winbox setting, like the dual stack thing here. But it's not there to actually use radios. That you need to do in terminal. So you just set use radios to yes, then you get the same thing. In this case, it's going to be set up as a prefix delegation. I have a pool, that's pool 1. I have the interface, same thing as we're doing on IPv4. We use a pool, mainly, unless you actually need to lock it down. 
When it comes to IPv6 and free radios, Microtik has actually added uh, their dictionary files for free radios. Dictionary file is more or less a compilation of how router OS is using radios. Also, from 643, they've added a couple of new extensions attributes to this one. Delegated IPv6 prefix. That's the prefix that we're going to send out, slash 64 or whatever you want to do. Or delegated IPv6 pool. And that's the name of the pool you're going to use on the router. In this case, I've called it pool 1 in this lab that we're going to run. To use this with free radios, usually I have an SQL database behind it because it's much easier to work with. How many of you guys are typing in SQL commands yourself? Oh, some is doing like this. Not many of you. This is actually how it looks if you're going to add a user in free radios on terminal. Is it practical? I wouldn't say that. Especially not if you have about two or three thousand clients you're going to push in. That's not what you want to do. I'm, I'm not using it. What I've done instead is that I'm adding Dalo radios. It's one of many front ends to free radios. It's up to you which one you're going to use. The only thing is for me, it actually makes things easy. Because I need to have my MAC address, I type it in and I say, OK, I want to have this speed for this client. Done. That's how we want to do it. So, now we're going to do the hard part of this presentation. Let's do it live. The thing is, here on my table now, I have two routers. This is actually the one giving me connectivity. This is the router going to act like DHCP server. Ah, it's a good size, so you could see what we're doing. First of all, we look at our radios. And as you see now, I have not ticked in the login and the DHCP yet. I am ticked it just because I want to show you when it kicks in as it should. So let's go and look at the client first, what settings we are doing in a normal CPE, because I actually have a CPE with me. So I just need to move my cables a little bit here. Oh, actually, yeah, I need to. This cable, let's move it over to the CPE. That means that we're going to lose connectivity with this one. Perfect. As supposed. This is my client router. It's a normal CP. We are having our DHCP client on IPv4. Now it actually got an IP. If I do a release, it should not get anyone in a while. There is a static one still there. On top of that, we have an IPv6 DHCP client and I addresses. The DHCP client here, well, IPv6, DHCP client is here. I've ticked in that I'm going to have a prefix coming down. And as you see, it's empty for the moment. In the address that's going to be local on the router itself, I've said it's going to take an IP from the pool. There's no pool for the moment because that's going to be created dynamically when it gets it from the master router. So if we go back then to the controller here, we first go to my This is a test setup. 
Here I have my user management in this case. And as you see, it's only three users for the moment. It's my account for administration. It's my address of my laptop and my router that I have on my table. In these settings, I've already, already added the groups of settings. And in this case, it's the DHCP pool I've added. So in the replay attributes here, you see that I'm using delegated address pool. And I also have the name of the normal IC, uh, DHCP version 4 pool. And on top of that, I have my client router. And as you see, this is a lab setup. So in this case, I have the password for this specific unit, and that's it. So we go into our radius DHCP server if I manage to click correctly here. We tick in the login, we tick in the DHCP. Let's see what's happened here on the status page. I have some accepts. So let's look what, how it looks in the DHCP server. You see that there's an R in front of them. We go to the IPv6 DHCP server. Same thing here. We got the dynamic one coming in. So let's look at one other thing here. Simple queues. And we have dynamically got the queue of 10 megabit because I've added into my clients, I've also added rate limit. And if you look here in the queue here, you have both the IP address of the IPv6 subnets that's going to be behind the CP. And you have on top of that also the IP version 4 address on the outside of the NATI. This way, it's going to be an aggregated in between both the, DHP, uh, the IPv6 and the IPv4. So it's going to be shared equally between the two protocols. So it's very easy, quick to get it actually up and running as an ISP to say this client is having 10 megabit. You don't need to do it on the ports and the switches or whatever. You do it with the radius. It's a quick and easy way. The fun part is if you're not running the release candidate as of this week, it's not going to work. <laughs> I found a bug in it and I fixed it. And there's going to be a bug fix coming out in 640. 4.1, very soon. After this, I'm just going to say, like my colleague, Lorenzo, from the boot camp trainers, you're all welcome to our boot camp stand. If you have any extra questions that you don't want to take in this big group, you're allowed to do those ones down by my stand. I'm also going to have this setup actually running on the table so you could go in and look more into deep how it's done. But it's not the complicated one. It's running OSPF version 3 and it's also running an OSPF for IPv4 to actually get these addresses out. But I'm actually running on, on full native IPv6 addresses here. Anyone that has any questions? It's good that I'm having short presentations because we're now back in time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's taken from the master one here that I'm saying in that pool is 64 addresses pulled out. So it's just the name of the pool I'm adding. It takes from that one, yeah. So the router itself on the back side is going to take from the pool that's delegated down to it. That way, you actually, you do everything that you need on the client side. And the clients behind that one is going to do with the Slack, getting addresses fully out to be able to surf.
you don't do that here. You just have a normal IPv4 on the outside, and you get the slash 64 that's going to be used behind it, and it's going to be routed on the local link addresses from the outside of the router. Any other questions? If we get a microphone here, it would be easier. Then I'm actually finished.